Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And uh, if I look tired, it's because I am tired. I don't know what happened yesterday, but I was just exhausted. I went for a run in the morning and then just the rest of the day was shot. Anyway, so today's video is going to be about um, my experiences with the PCAT. If uh, you know, you're thinking of taking the PCAT or you know wanting to go to pharmacy school, this is kind of how it goes down. Now, I took mine in Missouri, so um, I, I can't imagine the f facilities being much different in other states, but this is how it went for me. So, first things first, I spent months studying for this thing, and I highly, highly recommend that you study for this thing, um, particularly in my case where I haven't been in high school since 97, and uh, I haven't taken a test like this since I took the GRE maybe in 2005 or something like that. So it's been quite a long time for me. Um, so a lot of this stuff that I studied um, was a lot of just, um, you know, refresh my memory kind of thing. So I am a cheapskate and I bought two guidebooks from Half Price Books because I'm cheap. Um, and I think half price books may be specific to St. Louis, um, but I'm sure you know, wherever you're from, there's some kind of discount bookstore, and I highly recommend going there because the material that is in the book is pretty much the same as what you'll see on the test. So for me, my big book was this here. So this is the Kaplan um, PCAT. Kaplan has a bunch of different types of books for like your MCAT, your DAT, you know, whatever it is, but Kaplan is like you know, the gold standard for these little study books. And as you can see, 2016, 2017, this book cost me like $8, um, whereas normally they are 60 bucks. So yeah, I saved a lot of money doing that and the material is, is the same. So um, in the book, I mean, you get, yeah, so this is the same, uh, the, the chemistry portion, but each, each chapter is, well, I don't know how, how to explain, but basically um, you have like a big, a big chapter that encompasses all of biology or all of chemistry. And then within that big chapter, there's sub chapters that are, that get more specific. So like in the biology section, you have like, you know, the endocrine system or the circulatory system. It's just all, you know, broken up like that. Um, the PCAT consists of um, biological processes, chemical processes, there's a critical reading section, and a quantitative reasoning section. And um, I, and I'll show you my scores here in a second, but uh, anyway, if I hadn't studied for that, I'm sure I would have been up a creek, but um, the Kaplan book goes over each of those sections. Um, I actually also bought one of these. This is a Rees Interactive Flashcards. And this is the first thing I started looking at because each thing, you know, you have like a question here and then the answers on the back side. And it helped a little bit, but um, they also had a section in here that was vocabulary words. Like, you know, this word is to this word as, and then you choose um, but none of that was on the PCAT, so I'm not really sure how old this book is because it doesn't have like a year to, uh, listed on it, but anyway. Um, oh, and, and also I was going to mention on the, the Kaplan book is that each subchapter will have a set of problems to work through and then give you like detailed answers as to, you know, why. Uh, the studying part is very tedious and it's very time consuming. I spent a lot of time studying for that, and um, not only that, but I'm also in Organic Chemistry 2 as an accelerated summer course, and it's just been so busy for me, like I've just been studying, <laughs> I have no life. So anyway, um, I took the test on July 12th, and um, being in the Organic Chemistry 2 class has really helped me with the actual chemi chemical processes portion of the PCAT. So let me just go ahead and describe what it's like going into the testing center. So first, first of all, to sign up for the test, you go to a specific website where you sign up 
to like actually take the test and that is through the PCAT testing website <laughs> and I can't remember the name of it offhand but then once you sign up for it, you pay for it and everything right then and there, you actually have to take that information. You're going to have like a, you know, a, a, basically like a student ID type number that they assign you and you put that into your testing facility of choice. So in Missouri, uh, well, St. Louis area, there are two centers I could choose from and I picked one, you know, that was the closest to me. And, uh, then from there it gives you all the times or like the the date brackets and the times that you can take it when you sign up for the test when you pay for it you actually sign up for the date bracket so in my case i signed up for the july um and it was like past the deadline so i actually had like an extra 20 bucks that i had to pay which kind of sucked but whatever i just wanted to get it over with um so anyway so the testing window, and then you choose your facility. So there's two different websites you have to go to. So keep that in mind, because if you pay for it, but then you don't sign up for it, then you lose your money, and that's a lot of money to lose. Anyway, so you go into the facility, and it's very highly um, secure, I guess. I, I, I don't know. So you, it, it, you walk into it like any normal, like, you know, dentist office or doctor's office or something like that. There's like a little waiting room in there. But you have to take, you, you cannot have your phone on. Um, if it buzzes, you're gonna forfeit your grade. You can't, you can't have it. So I had my little purse with my wallet, my keys and my phone, everything, you know, turned off. Um, my watch, I couldn't have that either. I had to have it off. And they give you a key, you put it in a locker, you have like an assigned locker everything goes in there so like I said if you don't turn your phone off and it's just on silent and it buzzes while it's in there um, they will give you a zero on your exam so don't do that um, so anyway they also take like your palm scan so you have your hand and you put it on this little scanner thing it takes like your vein pattern it's so bizarre but uh, you do that you have your picture taken like all these things um, then before you actually go into the testing room, you are, pat, you know, they don't pat you down. You pat yourself down. You show your ankles and all that stuff. I had my glasses on and she made me take them off so she could examine them for cameras. <laughs> I mean, this place is serious business. So anyway, you go in there and it may be different for other tests, but for the PCAT specifically, you don't get a calculator, you don't get anything. You can't go in there with anything, in your pockets, nothing. You can't even chew gum. Um, and they give you this like dry erase um, type booklet that you can, you know, you can flip pages. It's got like five, five laminated pages on it and that's where you can do your scratch work on there. Um, so that's that. And then you have noise canceling headphones, which I, as well because there's a bunch of other people in there taking not everybody's taking the PCAT people are taking all kinds of tests in there so it's just you know the noise of like the clicky clicky yeah you just want to cover that up anyway so during the test um, I'm I believe that the order is the same every time but the first thing that I had to do was write my essay which I don't have the grade for yet but that's the one where you are graded on a scale of one to six. You have people that are grading your essay for, you know, grammar, you know, flow, all that stuff. You're given a topic and you can't choose the topic. It's just a random topic and then you have to write an essay on it. And it's your standard essay format, intro, three body, conclusion. And um, definitely take your time, or not take your time, but definitely use the whole time that they give you. They give you um, 30 minutes to do it. And in order to write a cohesive functional essay, it's best if you write as much as you can, make sure that you're checking your spelling and your grammar and all that stuff. And don't make, you know, run on sentences and don't use f fluff language. Like, um, I, I don't have a good example right now, but um, if you're saying like, just, just keep it simple basically, but use, professional language. Fortunately for me, I'm 
accustomed to writing reports and essays, so um, this part was sort of easy for me. But um, you know, if if you're not a strong essay taker, definitely practice. So that was the first thing. Um, the second portion was um, biological processes. Yeah. So the the first actual multiple choice portion was biological processes, which you know again was more easy for me just because I have a master's in biology so you know it I, I ended up doing pretty well in that section this next section is the chemical processes and then after that critical reading which or yeah critical reading which you're given a passage and based on that passage you're given like a series of questions and I can't remember how many questions per passage I want to say it's about six questions per passage and you're given like um, I think total there's 48 questions so it's like seven passages that you're given and um, it's not easy it's not an easy section especially since you've already gone through your essay writing your biological and your chemical processes your brain is starting to kind of shut down a little bit and to actually sit there and read a passage that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with science like one um, I can't really give you an example because by by law I'm not supposed to but um, they're not going to be necessarily about science. They can be something completely like, you know, just an essay that you read that somebody wrote on like classical literature or something like, something like that. Something I'm not schooled in. <laughs> um, and then you're supposed to draw conclusions based on the passage. So I didn't do my best on that, but I didn't do terrible. So um, anyway, the final section is your quantitative reasoning section. And this is the section I did the worst on and it it surprises me because back in high school when I took my ACT that's the section that I did the best on um, I am so far removed from calculus based math right in my job that I'm doing now that it's just I don't use it I lose it you know and I studied for it um, and I studied pretty well for it however um, you're not able to have a calculator and the calculator that they do give you is computer based so you can click on a button on your screen to pop up this calculator and it's basically a 10 key calculator you have no scientific um, like you can't calculate exponents or anything like that the thing that really killed me was I could not calculate logarithms on there um, <clears throat> because it doesn't give you the option to calculate that on their calculator and I don't know about you, but I don't have logarithmic answers memorized for, for things. So I spent a lot of time guessing on my quantitative reasoning. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind whenever you take your test. You cannot calculate logarithmic functions. So anyway, <laughs> so that's that. And I did the worst on that, but still... Cumulatively, I still did pretty well. Now, here's the moment of truth here. So here's my score. So once you take your test, um, they give you a preliminary printout. So I haven't gotten my official score yet, but the preliminary printout is pretty much, you know, it can grade your multiple choice. I mean, it's pretty easy nowadays to do that. You don't have scantrons or your, you know, if you even remember those, but, uh, Anyway, so here's my printout. I blocked out my name and my candidate number just for, you know, security. So here's um, my biological processes. I got a 98. <laughs> but I kind of, you know, I'm pretty proud of that. But again, I have a master's in that, so I should have done well on that. My chemical processes. Um, so the number you really want to look at is your percentile rank. So basically... Um, the 98th percentile means that I did better than 98% of the people that took the test, which is a pretty high score. Um, for chemical processes, again, just being enrolled in, in organic chemistry too, it really helped me with this. This is, even though it's a 72, it's still considered a good score. Um, uh, this is like a phenomenal score. Um, for my critical reading, <laughs> I got 48. I told you I didn't do my best on that. And then my quantitative reasoning, 29. But again, I spent a lot of time um, 
guessing with that. But all in all, um, so your composite score is the score that the school will go off of. They do want to look at the different areas, like, you know, your, they want to look at how you did biological, chemical. I think they focus on these three for the, for the, uh, well, the school that I'm going to. I don't know. Not all schools even require the PCAT, so, you know, each school is going to be different. So my composite score is a 74, which, um, again, percentile rank, I did better than 74% of the people that took this test, which is a, a really good test score. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, my studying wasn't in vain. <laughs> um, but anyway, so when you look at, so the two schools that I'm interested in, they actually have statistics listed on their website for these things and the statistics for um, the one here closer to me says that um, their average PCAT score for their applicants that are they're actually accepted to the school um, is anywhere from like 50, 55 to 60. Um, and the same can be said for the other school that I'm applying to and because that's their average I got a 74 basically what that tells the school is that I'm just a competitive applicant because I got a pretty well score on that I, I actually talked to one of the girls at one of the schools that um, I had my interview with them and she said that um, one of the things that sets my score apart is that um, because I haven't been in school for a long time and I haven't taken a test like that the fact that I I did as well as I did on this is also a contributing factor and I'm not just trying to bump my ego or anything like that but um, this is this is what I've been working towards and you know I've been working hard I haven't been slacking on this so if you want to take the PCAT um, I definitely recommend studying for it and study I mean even if you're not far removed from the subject material um, you could do better than a 74. You can do, you know, really well. But just keep in mind that with the quantitative reasoning section, you cannot calculate logarithmic functions. So just be really <clears throat> mindful of that. You know, it's, it's, I think each section is broken down. And this is all stuff that you can see on the PCAT, PCAT website. Each section is broken down into particular, um, you know, subsections. So like for quantitative reasoning, like, 14% is calculus based, like 10% is, you know, most of it is algebra based, but the problem with the quantitative reasoning section is that it is the last section. You have 48 questions and you have only 50 minutes to do it. And now that sounds reasonable. It really, I mean, as you're going through these problems and you're scratching them out, you're taking so much time per question doing it, even if it's an easy question. So part of my problem was that I was really running out of time and all I could do was just guess. Um, the, this is also a list on their website. Another thing to, to keep in mind too is that some of these questions that are on here are actually like dummy questions. They're not part of your grade. So they put them in there to kind of assess whether or not they're going to include them in a future test. Um, so it's kind of like their own way of evaluating their test and, and how good and <clears throat> difficult, I guess. I, I don't know how, how good it evaluates. Um, I did notice that there were some kind of weird off-ball questions in there that I was just like, hmm, this just doesn't seem like it fits in this category. So I'm wondering if some of those were these evaluation type questions. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you have any questions for me, beyond what I've talked about in this video that um, I can help with, you know, just feel free to drop a comment and let me know. Um, other than that, I, I just, if you're interested in going to pharmacy school or dental school or medical school, um, it's not something to take lightly. You really have to study for it. You have to prepare yourself for it because these medical based professions are serious business you're dealing with people's lives basically. So um, they want to make sure that, you know, you're dedicated and focused. And I feel like, you know, the PCAT is for the pharmacy school, probably one of those uh, gateway 
steps to that they use to assess your your seriousness for this but anyway if you have any questions just let me know in the comments and um thanks for listening to me and i will see you next time bye